Hi everybody and welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your very favourite place for scuba diving news, advice and entertainment. In today's video I'm going to talk about why more divers should really be diving in dry suits. Because, let's face it, this warm weather isn't going to last forever. So, when I first started out scuba diving in dry suits, in, in my eyes, dry suits were for serious cold water diving. Uh, as if that's the only time that you can ever use them. But dry suits are an amazing tool for scuba scuba divers. A few years back I took a whole group of students to the Red Sea in the warmer sort of months of the year and um, beforehand they asked me what kind of wetsuit they should bring along. I just told them a 3mm shorty should be plenty um, but you should have seen their faces when they were kitting up and the divers on the boat next to us were all putting on their dry suits. You can dive your dry suit all year round in all waters, and I do. I much prefer my dry suit. I, like most scuba divers, I have a five mil wetsuit, but I don't think I've touched it for at least 10 years. It's a lovely wetsuit. It's a waterproof Lynx five mil, which kind of shows its age, but I can dive my dry suit anywhere that I'd normally wear my five mil, and for warm water diving abroad as well, um, but normally I'll just sort of wear my shorty if I'm not doing anything deep. So dry suits shouldn't be this unattainable, dark, magic kind of a suit that are only for certain divers who have reached a certain level. They're just a tool to keep you warm underwater, and they use air to keep you warm instead of water. Air is a much better insulator than water. In the winter time, your thick woolly jumper is the warmest thing to put on because it traps lots of air against your body. Only we don't soak our jumpers in cold water before heading out to stay warm. You just rely on that air to keep you warm. Your body radiates heat outwards and it gets trapped in that air inside your jumper. And the same happens for your dry suit because underneath you wear an undersuit, which is just a fancy woolly jumper. Now before you close this video just buy a dry suit online and jump into the open ocean you do need some training before you can dive a dry suit but they are definitely worth your time and they are something that you can travel with to stay warm. So let's take a moment to appreciate the modern dry suit and look at why you should dive a dry suit. Now, most people's first introduction to a dry suit is in the Bond movie Goldfinger. You know, the one where Bond kind of scuba dives in the middle of the night, sneaking past guards only just to rip off his dry suit to reveal a perfect white tuxedo. A stark difference to the creature from the Black Lagoon that you feel like crawling out of a wetsuit all kind of soggy and wet. While you don't tend to wear expensive tuxedos under your dry suit, at least I don't, um, nor attend any fancy soirees soon after a dive, you do get out of the water, unzip your dry suit and you're dry underneath. You can head inside for some food or you can jump straight in the car and head home. The only bits of you that actually get wet are your head and your hands. So after a dive you are so much more comfortable. In a wetsuit you kind of have to peel your suit off and your cold wet body is now exposed to the cold wind blow drying you and the water itself is never fresh distilled clean water so you now need to go take a shower to be properly clean. Only if you're on a liverboard or something you can't actually go inside whilst you're still wet and if you're at an inline dive site you can't go inside anywhere neither. But with a dry suit you can just go straight in in your undersuit because you're perfectly dry and you're not going to stain the floor or create any wet patches. There's a lot to be said about exiting after a long dive and you are bone dry. The base layers and undersuits that we wear they're built to specifically wick moisture away from your skin so that your skin stays dry and clean um, so you can just get on with things after a dive. Whilst wetsuit divers are toweling themselves dry and deciding whether it's worth getting changed into some dry clothes only to change back out of them again before the next dive, as a dry suit diver you can just get on with things and do something productive. Also for the second and even the third dives of the day, I can promise you that it is much nicer to climb into a dry suit than it is to climb into a wet wetsuit. 
Wetsuits never dry that quickly, so you have to climb into a wet, cold, clingy, skin-tight suit that takes a few moments to actually warm up. It's much more pleasant in a dry suit. Oh, and the other thing that I don't miss about wetsuits is that first cold trickle of water that runs down your back when you first hit the water. You, you don't get that in a dry suit, unless something very wrong has gone wrong. But the main selling point for dry suits is obviously in their warmth. The obvious main benefit of dry suits that I've pretty much already spoken about is the warmth factor. A friend of mine will only ever dive in a wetsuit so that he can experience what his students are feeling. But if they see their instructor wearing a wetsuit, then they'll think that this is what cold water diving just feels like and they may never do it again, which is bad for the sport. Whereas if you're diving in a dry suit, you should never get cold. If you do get cold on a dive, then you're just not wearing enough exposure protection. Wetsuits also have the unfortunate feature that they compress at depth. So the deeper down you go, you know, where it's actually the coldest, your wetsuit is actually the thinnest. So you have less and less insulation the deeper down you go. In a dry suit, you can just top up your insulation as you need it so that you can maintain a constant warmth. Keeping your body warmth is more important than just being comfortable on a dive. Your body temperature is essential to knowing your rate of decompression too. Chemical reactions tend to go much faster the warmer they are, so when you're nice and warm, your body is absorbing gases at a sensible rate and it expels the dissolved gases at a sensible rate too. When your body is cold, those rates slow down, so you're not getting rid of those dissolved gases. Only your dive computer doesn't really know that. Very few dive computers actually take your body temperature or even the water temperature into account when they're working out your safety stops. So if you're cold at the end of a dive, you may actually have a bit more gas still absorbed in your tissues than your dive computer thinks and you're cold so your base instinct is just to get out as soon as possible but actually your best option is really to be a bit more conservative and stay under some pressure to actually give as much of that gas time to leave your system properly. The constant compression over time can actually become permanent uh, so that your 5 mil wetsuit it probably was five mil thick when you first bought it, but after a few years of constant compression, it's probably been squished down to a four mil or even a three mil. A lot of those teeny tiny bubbles that make up neoprene that are supposed to keep you warm, they've probably closed now. You don't have that problem with a dry suit, even a neoprene dry suit, because neoprene dry suits are made from high density neoprene that's already pre-squished, so you can't squish them anymore. Dry suits also give you the option to fit a dry glove system to them so that your hands can stay dry as well. The trick with cold water diving and keeping your hands warm is always a trade-off with neoprene gloves. The colder the water or the longer the dive, then the thicker the gloves you'll need. Once you get to 5 mil gloves, which are pretty much the standard, you actually have a whole centimeter of neoprene between two fingertips. That's three quarters of an inch of squidgy foam neoprene, so delicate tasks are just out of the question. For much colder water, you then get 7 mil gloves, and they're over half an inch across. So your hands are nice and warm, but you can't feel what you're doing, and you can barely put the gloves on themselves, because by the time that you put the first glove on, you have no chance of putting the second glove on. You can always go thinner, but then your hands will just go numb with the cold. So you often trade dexterity uh, and not being able to feel what you're doing against going numb and not being able to feel what you're doing. Now, my dry gloves are maybe three millimeters thick, but they're as warm as seven mil gloves. And then you can even get heated gloves to keep your fingers warm. Just be careful with heated undersuits and make sure that you understand how they can affect your decompression too, but they do make dexterity much easier using dry gloves. So the main benefits of dry suits are in their comfort and their warmth in and out of the water, but they also have another benefit that most people don't think about. 
One benefit of dry suits comes from how they work because they use a layer of gas to insulate you. That airspace changes volume as you ascend and descend. So to stop you from being vacuum packed into your suit as you dive down deeper, we add inflation valves to the dry suits. So just like your BCD, you can top up your dry suit in the water to relieve the squeeze and add some more warm insulation. But if you're adding gas, then you're changing your buoyancy, so you need to be able to get rid of it. So we use a dump valve, inflation valve, a dump valve, an airspace that you can sort of add and remove gas from. This sounds a lot like a BCD. Well, you can use your BCD to control your buoyancy and it can be a redundant backup if something should go wrong with your BCD. Now on a dive before I've actually punctured a BCD bladder and uh, without any backups you can't control your buoyancy properly. Unless you're diving with a spare BCD on you then a dry suit can be a very functional redundant backup. If I'm diving on my twins I'll actually run my BCD from one first stage and my dry suit from another one so it is a completely independent backup. If the first stage to my BCD fails, I can still control my buoyancy effectively with the other one and just use my dry suit to control my buoyancy. There's lots of different ways to control your buoyancy in dry suit diving. Some divers will only use their BCD to control their buoyancy and use their dry suit just to top it up every now and then just to stay a bit comfortable. Others only use their dry suit to control their buoyancy uh, whilst they're under the water and will only use their BCD once they're on the surface and others use a combination of the two. But while we always dive with a second second stage just in case something goes wrong, we're rarely taught to dive with a second buoyancy device. It's usually just, uh, if you get in trouble, drop your weights. But I'd rather be able to maintain a correct buoyancy than just ditch all of my lead. So if you're getting cold on dives or you're just thinking about investing in a thick 7mm wetsuit or even a semi-dry, then maybe it's worth taking a moment just to consider a full-on dry suit. They do require a little bit of training, but once you're over that hurdle, you're into the wonderful world of dry suit diving. But what do you think about dry suits? Do you dive them yourself? Um, what do you think about them? Are you still on the fence and you can't really decide? Let's talk about dry suits in the comments below and we can answer any questions that you may have about them. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel by clicking that little button next to our name. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.